I have the privilege of being the first speaker today, and I'm going to keep my remarks very brief. We are going to be hearing a lot of powerful and very sobering accounts of the state of anti-Semitism, global anti-Semitism in the world today. It is not a pretty picture, and there will be videos and words that will cause us to, to understand that we are in a time of great danger. And so I thought I might use my brief words to share also a message about the importance of perspective. In many ways, it feels like the Jewish community is under a level of assault and threat unseen since the dark days of the Holocaust. One need only utter the words ISIS, Paris, Hypercaché, Copenhagen, and other Rorschach-like phrases to summon up deeply disturbing images of a world that once again seems to have given birth to this irrational ancient hatred that has been with us through the millennia. As I say, we will be seeing and hearing today about the magnitude and the spread of these threats to the Jewish community worldwide and to our own honor as people of goodwill and of conscience. But I want to say to each of you that whenever I find myself daunted, as I often do, by the challenges of our day, and in particular, by the present, clear and present danger of resurgent anti-Semitism, I am reminded of the remarkable words of my remarkable late father, Tom Lantos. He and my mother, as most of you know, were Holocaust survivors. And my father went on to become the only Holocaust survivor ever to serve in the United States Congress and one of its most forceful advocates for human rights. I can tell you that their incredible lives read like a script out of Hollywood, and uh, my mother uh, can confirm that. But that is sort of a story for another day. Maybe next year's uh, archives, I will tell you some of the incredible drama and beauty and romance of their lives. Um, but it is the fact that because my father and mother had lived through the very worst that man could inflict on his fellow human beings, he, in particular, had a strong sense of perspective about the events that surrounded him in the present moment. And remarkably, he was one of the most optimistic people I've ever known about our world. And so whenever I would feel overwhelmed by what I was dealing with in my life or what was going on in the world around me, in his marvelous Hungarian accent, he would reassure me. And he would say, with apologies, don't worry, darling. We are just bending a windy corner of history. And around that corner are bright blue skies and wonderful opportunities ahead. I was reminded of my dad's very important gift of perspective recently when I attended the 10-year anniversary of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe's conference on anti-Semitism in Berlin. It was a very sobering conference because in point of fact, events have taken a very disturbing turn in Europe. But as discouraging as the conference was, I was also reassured by the knowledge that history is not kind to, nor does it ultimately reward those who trample on the dignity and the rights of other people. While on a quick bus tour of Berlin, I was struck by a comment from the tour guide who said that when the Edict of Nantes was revoked in 1685, thousands of persecuted Huguenots fled from France to the city of Berlin, where they ended up starting many of the industries and trades that became the backbone of that region's economy. So it was very interesting to me because while I was at a conference focusing on the threats and dangers of anti-Semitism, it was a reminder to me that the hatred that impels attacks against the Jews is of a cloth with the hatred directed towards any minority community at different times in our history. Now you will recall, or even if you don't, I'll share with you 
that the Edict of Nantes had been signed in 1598 by Henry IV of France. And at that time, it had granted to the Calvinist Huguenots substantial rights in a nation that was overwhelmingly Catholic. This was a break from the long-standing doctrine in Europe at that time that required subjects to follow the religion of their rulers. It was well expressed in the old Latin phrase, quius regio, eius religio, whose realm, his religion. We might, I think, reasonably view the Edict of Nantes as an early advancement of sort of the broad notion of fundamental human rights and especially religious freedom and freedom of conscience and belief. And so clearly, its revocation was a huge step backwards. But the critical point, and I think the point that should give us some sense of hope as we face the terrifying realities of today is that by driving out the Huguenots, it was the French who ultimately paid a heavy price. And the city that at that time welcomed them and gave them refuge reaped enormous benefits from their joining that community. This is a bit of perspective for us. The times are dark. The circumstances are frightening. And storm clouds have not only gathered, but they have broken, and broken in places where we thought that this old, dark hatred of anti-Semitism had been defeated. But we know if we look at history that, as I said, history is not kind to, nor will it ultimately reward those who seek to trample on the rights of others. And so, despite the serious subject matter that brings us here today, and despite the very, very sobering, sobering things that we are going to see and hear, I remain and retain that same optimism and that same sense of perspective and hope that my father shared with me so often through the years. <laughs>